What's this? I'm trying to make you liver and onions, okay? And if you watch this video and you want to go, ew, and don't leave it in the comments, don't talk to me, I don't want your opinion. This is only for people who are interested in eating a liver and some onions. Because the nutritional value of a deer's liver with some onions and some mushrooms is off the chart. And there's no sense in wasting it if you're hunting anyways. And Steve Ranella didn't teach me this. I'm going to teach Steve Ranella this. All right. And in all these videos, remember I got six pack abs, no gray hair, no wrinkles. I'm hot. Okay. Now listen, take the liver, cut it up. This is like, I shoot for like a half inch thick pieces. Rinse it off. If you get a lot of the blood off of it, you also get a lot of the strong flavors off of it. Is not every deer's liver is the same. So if you get yourself a big gnarly buck in rut, um, that's gonna be really strong. So use more onions than liver, right? But if you get yourself a young buck or a young doe, um, something that's not so strong, um, then those are the ones that you can, you know, be less worried about the strong flavor coming through. And uh, all, all I do, when the stronger the flavor of the liver, and you tell that when you smell it when you're, when you're cutting and rinsing it, the stronger the flavor and smell of the liver, the less meat to onions ratio. Then a young one who's nice and tender and doesn't smell strong, more meat to onions ratio is what I do. Get some good salt. This isn't the best salt, this is just some good salt. If you don't know what good salt is, learn something from like Netflix or something. But see, you use a lot of friggin' salt actually, and you get this meat coated with a good layer of salt like that, and then flip it over and do the same thing on both sides if you can. It takes a lot of onions and a lot of garlic. So How many onions is that? This is two of these great big, you know, giant onions. Giant onions. And I don't know where they came from. They're not homegrown. I wish they were blah. Put those in the in a pan. What, what I use is a big scoop of coconut oil. A big spoonful. I mean, one of these big spoons filled. That's what I start with. And a whole bunch of garlic. This is the garlic we're using right now because my wife went to Costco. A huge bunch of this. You can see that's probably like three big tablespoons. And then get about what I have about six. I had about six or eight. These are baby Bella mushrooms. Um, you need a bunch of mushrooms. So what mushrooms are going to do is make uh, mushrooms are going to make uh, the sauce nice and uh, rich and flavorful. And then I've salted and granulated garlic powder. I like to put garlic powder on. Um, to take off some of the strong smell of deer liver. I got these onions cooking down with all that um, garlic in there that I was showing you. And then here's one of my secrets. We don't always do this, but today we're making our own mustard with some super fine mustard and some super vinegar. And so we just, what we do is we get this already like this and we just put a little bit of mustard on these pieces. And this is the this is one of the secrets to to uh, amazing liver and onions, no matter what kind. Is most people put the mustard on afterwards, but um, I've been working on this for a long time, and I found out that putting the mustard on the meat brings the the flavors of the mustard and the vinegar to the dish in a way that you can't get if you just dump mustard on the top. And then I use white rice flour um, because it makes a really nice gravy and I just there, I don't measure anything right I'm just winging it all the way and I've done this a hundred times to get to where I, it's how I like it so see how these onions are I like to get them I like to have a little bit of uh, crispy edges a little bit of not too much but a little bit of crispy edges so you get that caramelized sweetness and you get the the onions and the garlic cooked down and when it's cooked down then you're ready to throw the mushrooms in you don't want to put everything all together at once or else the mushrooms just disappear they're going to practically disappear anyways 
get the mushrooms in there get them incorporated the mushrooms will let out you know mushroom juice or water and this will get a little thinner but I'm still gonna have to add something and what I like to add is bone broth but I don't have any bone broth today so I'll just add water the liver because liver is a pretty tender delicate meat you want to cook it kind of slow so it stays tender and juicy and doesn't get like cardboardy or waxy because most people don't like the texture of liver so that's something you got to be careful of and what's going to happen so now those mushrooms are soft and that's when I'm gonna I got a little burnt edges in there but I don't worry about the burnt edges too much as long as you don't have too many um, and then I'll just take each one of these plop them in there This is a lot of liver and onions. This is twice what I normally make, but I've got twice as many people to feed today as normal. Because it's Sunday and everybody's home, nobody's going to work. And so when I put that rice flour and that liver in there, it tends to dry this up. And so when it gets that dry, what I'll do is just get some water. Uh, I use the hottest water I can get near boiling if possible. And then I just want to get the mustard and the rice flour and everything incorporated into all of it before I go for the long sit time. That's, that's going to be good. And then I'll just cover it. Turn it down in about, um, I don't know, 15 minutes or 20 minutes, something. I mean, I don't time it. I just leave it alone for a while and, and uh, it'll be delicious. As your dish is going to end up, this is some I prepared earlier. It's going to end up looking something like this. So you can see there's some mushrooms in there. You can see the garlic chunks. Here's, the, here's some pieces of liver. And look at how tender it is. You just chunk it with a and it's cooked to the center just perfect i mean not overcooked i don't know if you know what star anise is but they look like this and they come in a are you can you see okay so what i just take one of those and i put it in my wife's uh whatever this thing is and you bust it all up into a million pieces the finer the better and it only takes one of those and then um, don't add the anise until after the meat is in there um, because it, it tends to dis the flavor tends to disappear if it cooks for too long. But it'll give it a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of aromatic, um, uh, a gentler smell. And so all these things that I'm talking to you about tame the liver down so it's not so wild tasting or smelling. And, and you know, even people that are on the edge um, who are just like, oh, well, maybe I'll try your gross liver and onions. You know, those people, not the eel crowd, but the, well, I don't know crowd. They usually are, become converts. So um, try this. Let me know how it goes. Um, and, oh, and the other thing I like to do, we cook a rice cooker full of rice. And what we like to do is put some rice and then put our liver and onions on top of the rice. And... Uh, if it's not spicy enough or, or if you like some more spice, then we put Tabasco on it and stuff like that. But anyways, what's going to happen is you're going to get several more meals out of a deer because a deer's liver will be big and I cut it into like three or four pieces. So that's four more meals out of one animal, which in my mind is brilliant. Um, because, you, I mean, you, you got the time of going hunting, you got the bullet, the gas, the tags, all this stuff. Why not get the maximum amount of it? And... This is the most nutritious part of the animal. Most vitamins, most protein, most everything goodness. And it's organic, free range, you know, you can't get any better than deer. So 